So heat dissipation from an infinitely long fin, I have already told you that the, the length of the fin, this is quite uh, theoretical, this is hypothetical, uh, but this is uh, quite easier to understand, to approach how it goes on. Okay, so heat dissipation from an infinitely long fin, that is L tends to infinity. Okay, so in this case, if you see, see, this X is approaching towards the infinity. Okay, and you can see as we move along the direction of X, the actually the temperature profile starts decreasing and it eventually comes to the ambient temperature. See, it is not zero. This is not zero. This is the ambient temperature. Nothing could actually come down below the ambient temperature because if something has to come down below the ambient temperature, you have to deploy the refrigeration or the air conditioning technique, basically refrigeration techniques. But here we are not discussing about the refrigeration technique. Okay. So here it is. So at x is equals to zero. Okay. At x is equals to zero, t is equals to t naught, and at x is equals to infinity t is equals to ta ta is the ambient temperature these, these are the boundary conditions okay you just need to deploy the boundary conditions here so once you deploy the boundary conditions here you will actually have these two constants coming out okay and then you actually deploy into that particular thing and then you will have the equation this is basically the temperature profile this is the temperature profile for various m's Okay, so temperature profile, you just put the value of x and you will get the value of t, t minus t a. Okay, so this is the temperature profile. Okay, now the rate of heat flow across the base of the fin, we have to uh, take out the q max. Okay, so by the Fourier's equation, we all know that the conduction occurs at the base, the maximum conduction. So here it is, at x is equal to 0. Okay, you know this is the theta. Okay, so this is the thing. You just derivate it and put x is equal to 0 and just by little uh, here and there, you can actually get this and this is the fin. This is the uh, maximum heat transfer through a fin, not the maximum heat transfer, this is the heat transfer through the fin when the length is undefined or the length is infinite, okay. So it's just a simple derivation, you just have to, you know, derivate it, okay, because and we all know that when x is 0, the temperature becomes maximum, okay. So you can see, okay, when the x is zero, temperature become maximum. So you just derivate it, and in then you put the x is equal to zero there, and then you can get this. And little here and there, little rearranging the terms, and you can get it. Okay. Now let's start this numerical. Calculate the amount of energy required to solder two very long pieces of bare copper wire, 1.5 mm in diameter, with solder that melts at 190 degrees Celsius. The wires are position, positioned vertically in air at 20 degrees Celsius. Assume that the heat transfer coefficient on the wire surface is 20 watts per meter square degree Celsius and the thermal conductivity of the wire alloy is 330 watts per meter degree Celsius. Okay. So what is given here? The diameter of uh, the diameter, so it will be used in calculating the area. As you can all see, this is the cross-sectional area. Okay. So the base temperature is given here, 190 degrees Celsius. Okay, and the ambient temperature 20 degrees Celsius is also given here. Okay, the heat transfer coefficient, the convective heat transfer coefficient is given here. Okay, and the thermal conductivity is given here. So, friends, everything is given here. It's a quite simple numerical. So, the cross section area of the cross section area of a wire means I'm talking about the uh, circle. So, it is pi by 4 d square, and the perimeter is basically pi d, you all know. Okay. So just put these two things here, you have H, you have P, you have just calculated P here, you have K and you have calculated A here. So you know the fin parameter is root over HP by KA. So you can calculate this and we all know what is the formula. The formula is root over HPKA theta naught or T, T minus T infinity or TA for this matter. Okay. So this is the thing, okay? Now the next numerical, it is required to heat oil to about 300 degrees Celsius for frying purpose. A ladle is used in the frying, okay? The section of the handle, the section of the handle is 5 mm by 18 mm. The surroundings are at 30 degrees Celsius. The conductivity of the material is 205 watts per meter degree Celsius. If the temperature at a distance of 380 mm from the oil should not reach 40 degrees Celsius, determine the convective heat transfer coefficient. 
Okay, so what is given, friends? TO, that is the base temperature. The width is given. The thickness is given. Okay, the length is given. The K is given. And the ambient temperature is given. And this is the diagram of uh, what they are, you know, what they are meant to uh, explain you. Okay, so this is the cross section and this is the uh, main uh, main drawing of the handle. Okay, so convective heat transfer coefficient. So what they are asking you, if the temperature at a distance of 380 mm from the oil should not reach 40 degrees Celsius, determine the convective heat transfer. So here you need to deploy the formula for the uh, uh, means the temperature profile because here we are uh, talking about you know calculating temperature at some distance x okay so here for infinitely long fin okay so do it it's everything is given so just you need to calculate the m and once you have calculated the m you need to actually calculate h okay so everything is there nothing to worry about p you know what is p p is basically for a rectangular what is p it is basically 2 into breadth plus thickness okay so that's it and area you know that is breadth into thickness okay so another uh, uh, numerical for this matter a temperature rise of 60 degrees celsius in a circular shaft of 60 mm diameter is caused by the amount of heat generated due to friction in the bearing mounted on the crankshaft the thermal conductivity of the shaft material is 50 watts per meter degree celsius and the heat transfer coefficient is six and a half watts per meter square degree Celsius. Develop an expression for the temperature distribution and determine the amount of heat transferred through the shaft. Okay, assume that the shaft is a rod of infinite length. So uh, we are very, uh, we are pretty much clear what kind of uh, formula we're going to use because they have already told they have uh, they are all actually telling us that you need to use the uh, rod of infinite length. Okay, so. See, the temperature rise is given here, the diameter of the shaft is given, thermal conductivity is given and heat transfer coefficient is given and we all know that this is the general solution of the second order differential equation. So, using the following boundary conditions, okay, so we got the required expression, okay. So, because we have, we had to develop this, otherwise that this thing we have already uh, discussed in my previous slides, okay. So, heat, amount of heat transferred Q, so this is the thing. And we all know that the that the formula of Q, you know, okay. So M is this. Just calculate M, and then you calculate the Q, okay. So it's pretty simple, right? So uh, let's go to this. It's IES 1993 question. Two long rods of the same diameter, one made of brass that is having conductivity of 85 watts per meter degree Celsius, and other made of copper that is K is equal to 375 watts per meter degree Celsius, have one of their ends inserted into the furnace. Okay, one of the ends means it's a cantilever kind of thing. It's a fin basically, full stop. Both of the rods are exposed to the same environment, full stop. At a distance 105 mm away, okay, 5 mm away means they, they, they're talking about X uh, and the temperature. So, the temperature profile has to be there. The temperature profile equation you need to insert. Away from the furnace end, the temperature of the brass rod is 120 degrees Celsius. Okay, at what distance from the furnace? and the same temperature would be reached in the copper rod okay so the thermal conductivity the thermal conductivity of first rod thermal conductivity of the second rod the controlling differential equation we all know this is second order differential equation and it is its general solution so you all know the boundary conditions so in the boundary conditions you are getting c1 here so you're getting c2 here you just actually you are actually deriving the equation so here you are so this is the temperature profile okay now for the brass rod, see uh, there are actually two rods, simultaneously two rods, okay. So what you need to do is, so here it is like the same equation that you are transferring, okay. So just, you know, rearranging the term, just by doing simple mathematics, what you can do is, you have M1, uh, you have M1 and you have M2, so take the ratio and you know the, uh, the length you can calculate from here, okay. Okay. 